Hi everybody, well, we are uh, kinda, kinda maybe coming out of the pandemic. And uh, uh, out and then sort of back in. I it depends on who you listen coming. to <laughs> and where you live and what your thought process is. But uh, Hollywood has uh, come up with a movie about making a movie during the pandemic. We heard lots of stories like what happened with Tom Cruise and everything when he was trying to make Mission Impossible. Well, they have a movie. It's called The Bubble. And when you first see the previews, you think it's going to be a really corny, corny movie. And then you watch it and you find out that's exactly what it is. <laughs> okay, coffee everywhere. That was my next coffee. Damn it. Okay, so quick premise of the movie. Hollywood actors, A-list actors, supposedly, in a very hit sci-fi series. It's a spoof, right? of, a spoof of real life. Yeah, but I mean, they you see them making the movie with the dinosaurs and the green screen yeah. and all that, and then all of a sudden it's just the actors and they're quarantined in a hotel and they're trying to make the movie during the pandemic. Now, let's qualify this. These are A-list actors in the movie world, but the movie is played by B and C-list actors. Right. Yeah, these are not A-list actors coming together in an ensemble cast. It depends. Right. Uh, nope. Wait, wait. <laughs> B no, 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 no. C-level actors. Some of them are, but Karen Gillan is, is, a, is, is maybe a B. She's she's up there right now. She's one of the up and coming stars right now. She's but been that in a, doesn't that doesn't make you an A-list actor. She's big in Marvel. She was in the Rocks movie recently. She's had her own Netflix movie. She's the up and coming one of the up and coming actresses right now. So you can't take that away. Uh, Pedro Pascal, Wonder Woman 2, The Mandalorian, he's been in big movies as I well. I understand, but these are not the Stallones. And yeah, the... but though Stallone isn't an A-list actor anymore. I'm talking, who's an A-list okay, actor right now? In his time, We're Stallone going... was an A-list actor. Why are we going off on topic? Because this is a cast of nobodies. Okay, this is not Chris Pratt. This is not uh, Ryan Reynolds. This is not... Uh, no, those actors. But they're not actors you have not heard no, of. They're B and C level actors. You've heard of them, but you don't go to the movies to see them. Yes. Agree? Well, you guys liked Karen Gillan's last movie, and we watched it because Karen Gillan's last movie. But I'm not like, movie. oh, another Karen Gillan movie. Let's go to it. Anyway, so the, there's a pandemic. There's a lot and, to edit. And people are making a movie. <laughs> people are making a movie. Except yeah. when you go into the movie studio, you have to abide by these practices. You can't leave and you can't have contact with the outside because the virus might get in. Right. Okay. So everybody is stuck there against their will until the movie production is finished. Yeah. And during, and during the whole process, if there's a sniffle, everyone's quarantined again. Yeah. yeah. Or one person tests positive somewhere in, well, a delivery person from this company brought us a script and we, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you guys watched this movie and were not happy that I made you watch this movie. No, no, <laughs> no. First, first of all, you know how when you're, something is supposed to be funny and you understand that it's supposed to be funny and you don't laugh. Okay. Well, well this was my face during the whole thing. Like one side was kind of like smiling and the other side was kind of like, oh my God, why am I still watching this? It's, it's like, like you had fibromyalgia. It's like something was going on because yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. Am I supposed to be laughing? This is a comedy that's supposed to be funny, but is not hitting anywhere. Right. Now, it did bring back, like, watching this movie, I was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly how people behaved during the pandemic. And that that's the kind of stuff that I thought I, I was, like, at least a little chuckle worthy. Like going to hug somebody and then, oh no no elbows maybe or the and security then, comes yeah. in and grabs you and pulls you away well it was trying to make a lot of funny references yeah. to the pandemic like oh like the the head boss he was okay not to wear a mask because you know he's holding a coffee and and that was all right and the other people had to scramble to put their mask on okay okay things like that you want to make fun of because it was absurd sure but this movie was about a year and a half too late because this was like making a joke about 9-11 in November. Right. Yeah. After it happened. Nobody wants to talk about this, this really disappointing, frustrating time, especially in a comedy, because nobody finds it funny. It's too close to home. See, I wouldn't say nobody, because I like this movie. <laughs> I, I got, see, I'm also love the behind the scenes stuff 
in Hollywood. I like the two guys who played the dinosaurs. When you're looking at the movie and they're, they're, they're pretending you're in the movie and you see them acting, you see these big pterodactyl type monsters and everything. And then when they cut to the green screen, it's just two guys in a suit in wires doing this. Should we be concerned about, you know, this level of vomit? But the conversations they are having, like at one point they're supposed to be climbing this mountain and everything and one girl gets all weak and she just kind of collapses and now she's floating and the guys and the dinosaurs are still trying to act and they don't know what they're doing. Is it, are they superheroes now? Now that was a great take. What's going on? Can they fly now? Referencing Star Wars. Yeah. See, I got Funny, all that. This is how good the movie is. I enjoyed it. And you know what? I, I felt the pandemic stuff. Like they're talking about, like the producer, you saw him talking with the coffee and there's a, you guys are all going to have to go back into quarantine again for another two weeks. And they're going, what? No, we just got out, blah, blah, blah. And he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the girl beside him, oh, by the way, you have to go too, because two, uh, two days ago, she delivered you a, a latte and he goes, son of a, and that's when it cuts. I found that funny because it was so ridiculous, the stuff that we went through during all this time. And I love the way that they portrayed some of the guys as, you know, the Hollywood actors behind the scenes just being stupid. Like, no. is it possible that, like, you forgot to take your meds or something? No. If you, if you found... It was two in the morning when I watched it. I will say that. What Don was just explaining funny. He just, he <laughs> just hit on all the good parts of the movie. Like... The the movie actually broke into dance scene. Real. Crystal just did a fucking TikTok with a dinosaur. Dance oh, yeah. sequences. Lots of dance scenes. Like multiple that were completely outside the plot of this movie. And so you're sitting there watching and you're saying, what the heck is going on? It was like watching Ghostbusters 2016 again. Uh, no. Worse. No. Well, with the dance sequences. No. No. <laughs> this movie wasn't trying to be anything but silly. It wasn't trying to be serious. Okay. It wasn't trying to make a statement. It wasn't a rehash of a classic comedy. They were just trying to make a quick movie with some actors about the pandemic. A quick right. movie. Yeah. A quick movie. <laughs> yeah. It felt like it was four hours long. I'm talking about making it. They made it in four hours. They made it in a hotel in the weekend, and I thought... In the, uh, in the weekend? They were upset because they were being quarantined over and over and over again, and they wanted to leave and they couldn't. They were being held hostage there for a super long time. I'm saying, in real life, they made the movie in a weekend. Oh, it felt like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the Paul just... Now you know why he couldn't find it funny. Because well, he gets jokes. no references whatsoever and he's dead inside. Apparently Judd Apatow <laughs> wrote this screenplay in eight weeks and he kept on bragging about that. Like, it is readily apparent that he wrote this in a very small amount of time because the jokes didn't land, it was about a subject matter nobody wants to revisit, and it was overly long. You guys are just nuts. What I don't understand is, like, it was trending. Like it was trending on Netflix. Well, because it was new, right? And people are saying, oh, what's this? And so everybody clicks on it. Well, trending on Netflix does not mean good. Because, well, we had a Bruce Willis movie show up and we know Bruce Willis movies have gone downhill. And that was number two and we watched it and we were sorry we did. This is the same thing. It was number two and it was a very terrible movie. Except the Bruce Willis movie did not last. This movie still lasts on trending. And you know what? I was okay with it. So take it for what you will. It's a silly, silly spoof on a comedy. If you like behind the scenes and making fun of the Hollywood people themselves, you may find this funny. See, this is no, like, silly movies. This is no uh, hot shots. This is not. No, but it's not. This is not Naked not Gun. This is not Airplane. Be. No, it's an ensemble. If you've seen Valentine's Day or what's another? Love Actually and okay. Mars Attacks. Okay. If you like those kind of things where it feels like life, like they're trying to imitate real life, then hey, give it a shot. But I would recommend that you skip this one. Run. Or watch it like I did. All right, what are you going to give it? This was a five at best. <laughs> See, five's not bad. 
It's not like, good. Like, no. like, like, I'm upset that I watched it. The way you guys are going, I really hated it, blah, blah, blah. I thought you were going to go way like a three or a two. Well, B, I'm not one of those people that can't see at least some redeeming qualities in something. This was not a, a, a trash fire. This was just not a good just movie. Just a bad movie. See, I'll give it a six and a half. I would not have paid for, I would have been very upset to pay for this in the theater, but free on Netflix, it passed some time and it was new and I found some of it funny. Good enough for me. There you go. That's our review of The Bubble. The Bubble. If you're interested in watching pandemic stuff, watch The Bubble. Until next time, take it, look at it. Watch the first 20 minutes. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You may watch it till the end. Okay, coffee everywhere. That was my next coffee. Damn it.